Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's him, y'all, and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the message. You know, I'm going to give a shout out to AC Accountability Commentary or Accountable Commentary. I forgot which one it is right now. But anyway, I'm going to give a shout out to him uh, because he shared with us a video of Akeisha telling us that in the hood, the Alpha is a guy with the resource and, and those are the scammers and the drug dealers. And AC rightly pointed out that in reality, the men who folded were the ones who did not become these stereotypical niggerillas in the first place. And that the men uh, who were productive were the ones who did not fold because they went the right path in the right direction, regardless of the pressure that was on them to be stereotypical niggerillas. That term that I just said is very offensive and I, I know it is. But the thing is, some might say, well, you know, hold up, uh, black man with your little high yellow ass. Who are you calling this? Well, see, that doesn't exist in nature. That's the thing about it. It is an artificial construct. We can argue about whether or not race is real or just an artificial construct. But that is an artificial construct. That stereotype is an artificial construct. It's not supposed to exist at all. But since we don't really have very descriptive names for the stereotype, this idea that is artificially constructed at hand us and successfully supplanted into the minds of black women and men alike in the West. And now through media, the world, I have to use something about which people are not going to argue over the definition thug is being argued about because Keisha's you know, sitting up and they're saying, well, a thug is, no, fuck the shuck up. A thug is a criminal. Now, they can be violent or they can be non-violent or a combination of the two, but a thug is a criminal. But since you want to argue about that and you want to supplant that with things like alpha and real man, and okay, since you want to do that, let me go ahead and tell you what we see a problem with. It is not masculinity or manhood. It is a hollow, shallow machismo. And it is, it, there is something that you, sister, imagine a man, if he's black, is supposed to be. And that's a niggerilla because you just keep on moving the goalposts as to how savage and stereotypical he has to be. But how successful he has to be in a world that is against anyone being savage. What you're pretty much saying is if you're black, you got to be super savage and then get away with it financially. Like, fuck the walk. Now they know that's not going to work. That's why they demand that. Because in the end, as I stated, it is about you making yourself disposable, black man, so that you get out the way and eventually she can be with daddy. And she, she'd rather be daddy's concubine and bed wench than to be your wife. Keep that in mind, too. But getting back to what AC rightly pointed out, Keisha, whom he featured, missed something and this is important I've talked about it before but we have to keep our eyes on this Keisha was trying to present this as a class thing it may have been at one point but right now it is beyond class western black women that are huxtable are the same their interests and hobbies may or may not be different but what they want is the same that's why knuckle dragon gun toting negatively stereotypical niggerillas are laying down with Huxtables and Bonshika and Bonquisha. And to them, all of these chicks are the same no matter what their class is because to, to them, they really are. They all sleep with them. They sound a little bit different, maybe wear different perfumes, different hobbies but they treat him the same. And you notice, gentlemen, if you're not that stereotype, they treat you the same. And even the ugly ones may treat you bad and like you're less than, but the ones who don't treat you less than either are ugly or they think they're ugly. That's where the problem comes in. They have to believe that they're ugly to not treat normal men like they're 
scum of the earth. Black men, I mean. And I'm going to tell you every time that that is a bad deal for you. And I know that white women in the West treat their white men the same way. Um, but this is not about that. I'm acknowledging that so as to not ignore it while telling you all that my topic is still what we got to go through. And see, black man, I still want to tell you that you still have to deal with something others don't. Because, see, if you go with that sister, she's going to start off with the attitude up front and then hit you with the divorce later. If you go and you decide you're going to date and marry Karen or Becky or Amber, she's going to not start with the attitude. And she probably is really not going to feel that attitude. But when she gets bored or gets complacent, she's still going to turn around and hit you with those papers, too. And she, uh, if there's a marriage, and if there is a marriage, you have to make more to marry her, which is still a form of discrimination. That's the funny thing. If it's going to be a marriage, she's just willing to let you hit that and, and not bother you by marriage if you don't make much. And that's what kind of makes her a better deal and sapphire but you still get hit with that later on uh you get hit with something and um whereas when you are a white man a black woman is ready and willing to treat you like you mean something And she's ready to do that for the long haul. What stops her is her training and her attitude. And when she fails to turn that off for you one day and the mask falls off or she reverts back because she forgets that that she's made all these exceptions for you um, as a zaddy. Well, then she runs you off, but she tries to get you back because she didn't mean to do it. That's one of the major differences. When Karen or Becky or Amber runs you off, she means to do it. Sapphire doesn't mean to run off Zaddy. So you still deal with some diminutization uh, uh, others don't, and that's not your fault. So sisters love to tell you, well, you know, these other women see you as less. And number one, it ain't your fault when they do. And number two, it's really pretty much the Wyatt woman that sees you as less. And that's not even every single nationality. But when you get down to this pro this proclivity of the Western hyena monkey bitch who's been hypermasculinized to see alphas as being scammers and drug dealers, or rather to see, well, yeah, pretty much. She starts off by seeing scammers and drug dealers as alphas, then later she can only see an alpha being a scammer or any drug dealer. When it gets down to her, it's not just the one in the hood, it's, the, it's her cousin in the suburbs too. There's also that. I know I was growing up, I came of age, you could say, I came of age um, at the turn of the decade from the 90s, from the 80s to the 90s, and I saw this happen in my Huxable neighborhood. Now, the ones that were a year older than me weren't so bad. The ones that were two years older than me weren't, but the ones that were at my age were looking for me to be a bit more negatively stereotypical as time went on. And things, like I said, changed when I got violent with black men. At that time, black males. And that was how I found out. And I lost my ability to respect a lot of them to a certain extent. The thing that helped was that I was about to go to Morehouse and that's a class uh, change in terms of environment. And I was thinking, okay, well I can get it back when I get there. And to be honest with you, I wasn't able to get it back. And for the first year, I figured I'm not really sure what I'm seeing. I don't know if this is what's happening, but over time I realized, yes, you know what, damn it, this, this is a problem. It is the same. And I'm not going to be able to get that respect back that I lost. And it took me years to get it back as long as I wasn't trying to get with them. And I lost that even that because something happened. I mean, I know exactly what it was and when it was. I was at a job about 2005 that I started. And the sisters really did rally around to protect us brothers. From a Becky a low-class Becky whose only job experience was being a nanny and who had no education and was now in this nice cushy office job trying to get everybody else fired because she felt that that was the only way to keep her job. She was trying to make herself indispensable to the company. And the funny thing was, she was targeting the black men first. I don't think this 
white chick hated black men, I think she just figured that they were the most dispensable. We were the most dispensable and replaceable because that's how it is in the workplace and she knew it. And she tried and the black women gathered together and kind of formed a shield around us. And that was the last time, even the one that was even when it was a gold digger when she was in high school and admitted she dated white boys when she was in high school. She was married to a brother, by the way. Punched him in the face when she found out she was pregnant. That man's been going through it. But at the job, she formed Voltron with the other sisters to protect the brothers from this white woman's efforts to get us all fired. They did do that, and that was the last time that I saw that. Fast forward to a few years later, and I saw completely different when I was becoming a teacher. And in that case, two teachers that were responsible for training were ganging up trying to get me demoted within my educational program, and it was a white woman who may not even like men that defended me and told me what the hell was going on. She said, I've seen this before. She told me, Black, I've seen this before. Both of those teachers are single moms and single grandmoms. They are used to Black men being one of two types. You know and you don't say, or you talk but you don't know. You are a teacher whose job it is to know and explain, and they're not used to that even though it's your job. They're not going to appreciate whatever you do. And I'm going to come back here later on this week and observe and prove it. I'm going to show you what it is. And she did do that. She came back later that week, did an observation. Supposed to be a surprise, but she told me when it was going to be. I asked her to please not tell me the time of day so that I could still be somewhat surprised. I wanted to be authentic. I wanted to be honest. She said, I got you. She showed up and 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 then told me what the teachers were doing wrong that were responsible for my training. She said to me, you were not supposed to be in a room alone with the students without them there. They were using you to take a break. That's not okay. You were not supposed to be teaching the special ed students by yourself without the special ed assistant there. That was with the other black teacher, single black grandma. That's not okay. She left you there. They want you to fail. And if you were a woman or if you were white or not black, They wouldn't be thinking this way, but you're a black man. You're obviously heterosexual with a heavy voice. You're married too, right? And I said, yeah, okay. And you're Muslim. So that means they know that you're not 9AY. Now they probably don't love or hate Muslims. I don't know how they feel about you religiously, but I'm telling you black, you're a a traditional straight lace, straight black man with an education who has to explain what he knows to others. You gotta talk, and they don't like that. You're not the man they dominate in so many words. And so, here's the kicker. None of these two were really, none of these two really grew up in the ghetto and in the hood, but they wound up being single black grandmothers. Both have daughters that are single mothers. Do you understand where this is going? And so this is kind of something that's been going on for a while. I want to tell you what my pops told me a long time ago when I was coming of age, actually. My dad said to me, son, when I was growing up, education was seen as something for little girls. And I didn't realize at the time that that was how it was when I was coming up. I mean, nobody said it out loud. So I didn't think that we really thought of that that way consciously. But now I realize that subconsciously we had not changed. My father came up in the hood he didn't grow up poor but he grew up where it was segregated where he grew up in a segregated environment all black folk of all classes lived together the teacher the post office worker the um the doctor the attorney if there was one the janitor They all lived in the same neighborhood. My dad was the son of the town's black doctor. He did not come up poor, but he didn't get, you know, a pass. He didn't get an isolated environment with the Cosby, so to speak, or just with other Huxtables. 
And so he had to see a lot of dysfunction and he was not allowed to really participate in that for obvious reasons. He even said, I remember the last weekend before I left to go to uh, college. And I remember my parents came to me and they said, listen, we got plans for you this weekend. And I didn't know why they would do that. But looking back, I don't think anything good would have happened. I probably would have made it to college. That was what my father told me later on when I was getting ready to go to college. But when I was in middle school, my dad told me that his community, that black community, did not respect a boy's right to say no to them drawers, that they did not um, they did not view education as being manly. And he also, and that's what BGS has told us. So when BGS says it, I've never set up and said, no, nah, that ain't true. This is some new stuff. I never said that because my father told me. I would not have known if he didn't tell me. But my dad told me that that was one of the attitude problems they had back then. If you're a girl, you could stay at school and finish. If you were born in a family that needs money, you get your butt out there and work. If you were born in a family that don't really need that money, it could go either way. In another community, the man is supposed to be educated so that he can provide. In our community, the man uh, is not really seen as a man if he gets too educated. Damn. Damn. He's less of a man if he sat there and got educated and started in the workforce late. Do you see where this is going? And now fast forward to today, and it is even the college chicks, the Huxtables, want what Boom Sheikah from the hood thinks is an alpha, and she doesn't see the rest of it. She doesn't see you as being capable of being an alpha if you ain't no scam and no drug dealer. Or you can be all that successful stuff if you go through the niggerilla cell block route first and turn your life around. But what about the non-former gangsters? You don't count. You're just a square. If you don't go through the route of being your worst enemies, worst stereotypes about you, you're not a man. Oh, our worst enemies could not have thought of the success of this. Yeah. And this is why we are seeing an attorney being beheaded by her pookie boyfriend in a high rise in Atlanta and him shooting it out with the cops because he ain't going to let them take him in alive since he's he knows he's going away for the rest of his life. And climbing uh, from balcony to balcony like King Kong. This dude, that's what he thought of himself as. How do you get sisters working hard to get where they are? Not only so that they never need a man, but to still turn around and pick the man they need to avoid. Well, let me give a shout out to Morpheus of the channel, the base Pluto for this, because he showed it with his community tab today. Oh yeah. You see, On his channel, on the community tab, he has a post that says, Welcome to Gen Z. They admit to giving men they know a bad, out of spite of men they don't want. Now, I misspelled want. I'm going to tease you about that later, Morpheus, but that's lighthearted teasing. In all seriousness, all jokes aside, um, he brought the receipt for what he said. You see, this was a screenshot of somebody's post. I'm a 20, almost 21 year old girl, and I just gave my virginity to a felon with ASPD, sociopath, violent tendencies and drug addictions, comma, where there should be a full stop. He is 6'3 and really hot, comma. I hope all lowercase eyes with a stupid self. I hope I fit the stereotypes and make the incels angry, L-M-F-A-O. She's a functionally illiterate bitch, and she's writing stuff like this just to tick off men that other women don't want. That, that's what it boils down to. She could be lying just to do that. And she's willing to tell that as a lie in order to tick off men. 
that other women don't want. That means that she's pretty much really, really hateful. Let me see here. Um, I'm going to scroll down. Literally, this is at most 3% of women who have of this at 30. Women also ignore biology. If he wants four to five kids, she's loose, useless. And she says, and he has a screenshot in which this lady, I think this is on Twitter, uh, named Cosme, says, women will see a man. I'm sorry, she says, men will see a woman who's 30, single. No kids, but has a great job, degrees, home, cars, financial stability, but thinks she's a problem because she doesn't want to submit to a man who doesn't even have a quarter of what she has. LOL, submitting to a man with less than you is crazy. Um, you know, it's kind of up to you, but um, she doesn't understand that most people are not going to have this, and these aren't the things that we're looking for anyway. That's a sister. From the screenshot, you can see that Cosme is a sister with her big old forehead having self. Looks more like an eight head. And then he has a screenshot of a lady named Drench. I think this is also Twitter. She's got a 10 head, by the way. I can tell that from the small thumbnail. Boy. Who man. If only these women could have memories the size of this chick's 10 head. So anyway, she has a screenshot. He has a screenshot of her screenshot. DMs full of ninjas, but I don't want not one. Iron, iron, iron want not one. No punctuation, no capitalization. Chicks functionally illiterate. You get it now? Yeah. It doesn't stop there. Most of them consume extremely violent adult videos. This is something that Morpheus knows about or he wouldn't say it. He reads statistics. He's got a post from yesterday in which uh, I think this may be from some message board. And she says, 18F, an 18-year-old female, was it struggle snuggled by my ex-19 male or did I just not like it? Uh, I 33 F recently started questioning my past. Okay. So she agreed. It just wasn't that good. And now she wants to retroactively get people's advice to tell her if it was a struggle snuggle or not. Now, if you don't like it, you don't like it. But this is where it gets even worse. A day ago, he put up a a screenshot from the Awake Media, Wide Awake Media. I'm sorry, Wide Awake Media. And the screenshot is a a headline of a video article. Beta male watches a girl getting robbed right in front of him and does absolutely nothing to help her. Hell, at least they punctuate it. But when you open up that screenshot, there's more. You see, somebody said he's a based male. They voted for this. Let the strong and independent take care of themselves and take accountability for their actions. And somebody wrote back and said, if you think like this, you're a H-O-M-O sexual male and detach from any biological sense of duty and power. So right, that right there shows that the same bleeding heart liberal chicks are willing to go um, ham and go hard in the paint against the particular men they uphold as heroes until they need to use them to insult hetero men. You see, if this man was H-O-M-O, she wouldn't have called him that. She continues, in fact, most homosexual men still feel the biological push to protect women. So you're a trans woman. Wait, hold up. Um, But aren't y'all pushing that too? You have abnormally low testosterone levels that you need to fix. 
She's overlooking the fact that this is exactly what the wealth women have been calling for all this time. She continues, if as a man, you're not ready at a moment's notice. She misspelled moments because that's a possessive, not a plural. At a moment's notice to vigilante, become vigilante, you dumb, illiterate. Let me keep on going to vigilante. When you see someone hurt, semicolon instead of comma, you are useless. You are rendered incompetent and are put into a cast below the disabled and homeless. So she has taken all of these groups that they uphold as marginalized and then uses them to insult this man because he said, no, accountability. You're strong and independent. You don't need no man. What the hell was this guy supposed to do? Now, it doesn't really matter the race of the women that are posting these things, although some of them, it was it was Wyatt and black women. The kicker here is this. They think the same generally with one exception. Becky wants a bad boy, but that bad boy doesn't have to be a violent felon for her. Now, if she's trailer park, maybe, maybe. If she's not what they call, not us, but what they call poor white trash, then she... Uh, may not want that violent felon. She might not demand that he be a violent felon. He could probably have a motorcycle and a few tattoos and still hold the job down. He could be a weekend warrior. Maybe. We already know that with sisters, if she is from the, from the hood or if she's from the Huxtable neighborhood or maybe even if she's a Cosby, you need to be a tattooed violent felon with a prison record. My God. It's time for me now to go and listen to Passport OG. He just premiered. Y'all let this sink in. That episode of The Fresh Prince in which Will Smith was trying to impress a chick and then impress her father by being two opposite dudes and he in the end finally told them, you two need to talk about this, said a lot to me because now this is playing out in front of us. However, 30 years plus years later, all these years later, the father, Mr. Huxtable, not literally that character, but you you get it, the dad that's present in his daughter's life and is really fathering her and raising her and is there. Th- that father has not sat down and had a conversation with his daughter. And you're being blamed for the incompatibility and for not being alpha enough. And now she's sitting up here talking about, well, in the hood, the alpha's a scam and the drug dealer. Like it's just the hood. You cannot save a community like that this is why STCBM is impossible Mrs. Courtney Michelle thanks for listening black call black mind blackout assalamu alaikum black heterosexual non select male power because they don't like a black patriarch until extinction or judgment day thank you for flying with us again here on Jet Black Airways where Jet Black is also a verb sorry about that y'all keep Jet Black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off time for me to catch this passport OG flight